Hello everyone. I'm really glad to say that I am going to be embarking on a new Daphne's Diary journal. Um, sorry it's taken me so long. I know that this has been highly requested from those of you that followed my last Daphne's Diary project. Um, but as you can see, I've got two brand new Daphne's Diary magazines in front of me. I've got um, issue number six and issue number seven. Now, issue number six arrived just before I went away on vacation, but I just completely completely ran out of time to start the new series and since I've been back issue number seven has arrived as well two beautiful beautiful um, magazines issue number seven as you can see um, has definitely more of an autumnal theme on the cover at least although there are some beautiful autumnal images in issue number six as well so I am going to put my journal cover together based on maybe both of these magazines I don't know I need to um, decide what format um, I'm going to take this time um, this is my previous Daphne's diary journal so um, if you are new to this series this is the previous one that um, I made the series was really popular the cover was made using issue number two I think it was of Daphne's diary 2022 and all of my pages are filled with beautiful Daphne's diary um, images. I've tried to piece um, the pages together aesthetically and use them in you know a really fun, um, exciting way. Um, as you can see, I've used dried flowers that I've collected from my garden. Um, so for anybody who's interested in seeing how I made the journal cover and you know how I put the pages together, I'll leave the playlist in the description box below. But I want to do a similar kind of thing with with um with more of an autumnal theme let me just give you a quick flip through of these magazines before i start using them to create my new autumn winter themed journal so this is issue number six and this one is where summer crosses over into um autumn so let me just show you the cover absolutely gorgeous that's the inside back cover and inside front cover now this one has got lots of um, autumn colours in it I mean you know this for instance here but there's also lots of um, summery pages as well which I'll probably um, put aside and save for next year but just some beautiful pieces I love this one here um, this has very much um, of a tapestry kind of effect I love the um, verses and poems that Daphne's Diary um, includes in their magazines and quite often um, you'll see me sort of either use the whole poem or even cut out um, sentences to use as quotes um, so lots of things that we can um, use use here um, love this um, that has very much of an autumnal um, palette color palette um, so I'll be going through this and just picking out pages that I think I'll be able to um, use so that's issue issue number six. And I'll leave um, the link as well to Daphne's Diary Instagram page as well, where um, I am pretty sure they show full flip throughs of the magazine if you're interested. But for those of you that, um, you know, don't want um, me to spoil things, um, hope um, that's been OK. Then issue number seven, which very much has more of an autumnal theme to it. So this is the front cover, the back cover inside back cover and inside front um, completely different feel to this one here i'm going to go through um, from the back um, to the front just because it's easier for me to flip through but you know gorgeous scrapbooking pages that are always included in the magazine isn't that just gorgeous beautiful as well so so many things that we can use look at look at these pumpkins and squashes just just beautiful we've got posters in the magazines as well there was a poster in the other one as well but let me just show you this this one here isn't that just stunning absolutely gorgeous love that more beautiful pages that we can um, use love these paper dolls as well they're called forest elves um, love the idea of um, trying to use those in some way. Um, more of a Halloween um, type thing. Betty Broom, isn't she fun? Gorgeous page. So this is issue number seven, as I've said. Beautiful stickers, um, woodland um, themed. 
this is just a beautiful, beautiful magazine for the new season. Now I want to make my cover slightly differently to how I made the last one. This one here um, has very much of a hardback style um, cover and I'm going to do more of a soft cover for this one here. I just love the front and inside front whereas for the last one I used both the front and back um, pages. I'm just going to tear this off and I know that some of you are cringing at the thought of me doing this but you know that's just the way it goes. I'm also going to fold this in As half. You can see I've cut my cover in half so this is what it looks like. So that's the inside um, front and back cover, that's the back and that's the front. I'm not worried about things like the barcode, you know I can cover that up with collage elements. Um, I do want to insert my spine. Now I just want to make this into a more manageable size. Let's just cut that and I'm just going to start off by gluing these two strips together. And I'm just going to use PVA glue just to stick this together. So just a bit, don't need much. I'm going to use some fabric as well to cover this up, which you'll see me do in a second so that we can beautify it and make it look nice and uh, nice and pretty. I'm just going to glue these back to back to back. And that will form my spine. Now I'm going to be using some of this beautiful polka dot ribbon. This is linen style, it's just polyester, but you know, that's that's fine. So I'm going to cut myself two strips, strips of this, a bit longer than I need, just so that I can line up the, the pattern. So one for the front and one for the back. You could use hessian ribbon, use whatever ever you have. You could even use scrapbooking paper. That's what I used for the one that I did last um, last time. So, as you can see, that's now the same height um, as my journal. And I can just glue, glue this down. So again, in fact, actually I'll use fabric glue this time. So I'm just going to apply some of my three in one fabric glue. In fact, actually this is Kalal glue. I'll apply some to the centre and then I'll spread it out with my with my finger just to make sure that it gets all the way to the to the edges. And then I can just use my finger here just to thin this out and this will sort of make sure as well that it doesn't go through the fabric and um, and make a mark. And I'm just going to stick this down. I'm just going to eyeball it and just make sure that that's in the in the centre. Now that that's glued down, I can just apply my front and back cover, leaving just a small gap um, enough for my journal to to fold. So I'm going to start off on the right hand side. I don't want to apply too much glue, so just a small amount. And again, you know, I can spread this out with my with my finger. I might get um, a little bit of bleed through, but hopefully. You won't be able to see it once the glue has dried. So I'm just leaving a small gap, just maybe two or three millimetres. So glue that one down and I'm going to do the same on the other on the other side. And make sure I get this the right way, right way up. Stand up to do this and I want to make sure that I've got a similar gap on both sides. There we have it. Well, I have got a little bit of seepage only on the front. Isn't that a shame? I didn't get any on the back, but maybe it will dry. Who knows? I would have liked to have added some sewing down the centre here as well, but my sewing machine isn't working. It needs to go in for a service. Ever since I used it last week over the um, embossing powder, it's not been working ever since. So I've obviously done something to the needle. Alex has had a look for me as well and he said, no, mum, you need to take it um, off to get it serviced. Now I'm going to be adding some of these little tiny corner protectors. I've just added a tiny amount of glue, as you can see, just regular PVA glue. And I'm just using my jewellery pliers now just to squeeze, 
squeeze these into into place I'll do all four corners um, because of course you know this journal here is a much softer cover than the one that I made um, last year so I think the corner protectors are a must I did add corner protectors to the last one as well and I just think it makes it look pretty as well it makes it look more finished I think the corner protectors just add a nice touch to the journal now I think I'm going to use baker's twine to secure my signatures this time Time. I used elastic for the last one so this was how I secured the previous one where's the where's the middle and you can see I just tied it um, in the middle I can't find my elastic I've got a whole bag of uh, different colored elastic somewhere so this will do fine um, actually I think it'll be perfect and this time I'm going to wrap it round twice um, so I will probably have two signatures in this one here. So we'll wrap it round again. And then let's just cut, cut this off here. Whoops, I think I just knocked my camera. And then what I want to do is twist those, those over like this. I'm not pulling it um, too tight. I'm going to wrap one of the threads underneath like so and tie this in a knot so there there we have it let's just make sure that that's nice and nice and straight so that looks that looks fine to me and i might add um, a little bit of a, a dangle let's just lift that um, up a little bit and let's see what i can find to maybe um, add to the end without um, making it too bulky. Let's just cut that off um, a little bit. But how pretty does, does that look? Let's add some of these flowers to the end. I've got four pieces here. I'm just going to cut them in half. Use a bit of fabric glue just on the, on the centre. A bit there and a bit on the other side as well. And this will still lay nice and flat for whilst I'm working in my journal, but just add a touch of a touch of detail. Those of you that have followed me for a long time will have seen me use these on other journals that I've made as well. So sandwich that in the middle and I'm just going to use a couple of these clips just to hold it in place until the glue has dried. So I'll do exactly the same on the other on the other ones as well. Now, as far as the papers for my signatures are concerned, I'm going to use plain paper this time. Of course, in my previous journal, I used all patterned pages from the magazine, from the paper box, which was given to me with a subscription that I had several years ago. Um, and what else did I use? A couple of pieces of scrapbooking paper that I felt coordinated as well, whereas I am going completely plain with this one here. Well, you know, to a degree. I've got this gorgeous vintage paper here that I picked up um, from a charity shop. Whoops, hang on, let me just stabilise the papers on my desk. Everything's about to go flying. I got a pack of 100 sheets, um, copy of paper, leaf design, and I got this from a charity shop um, for £2. And I must have bought this four or five years ago. I've planned on using it for the last few years and never got um, around to it or couldn't find it when I needed it. So I'm using six sheets of this and I'll show you what I've done with them in a second. I've also got um, some of this paper here which is faux coffee stained or tea stained paper and I picked up a pack of 50 sheets I think it is, no 100 sheets. Um, I bought this from Amazon last year. So I'm using six sheets of each. It doesn't sound like much, so only 12 sheets in total, but that will give me 48 sides by the time I folded it um, over. I only used 10 pages in total for these signatures in this journal here, and you can see how fat it got. So I've taken six of each of the sheets and I've just folded them in different orientations. For instance, this one here, I folded it up and then in half to give myself a pocket. So I've got two of those. I've got two of these, which I've done the same with um, as well. Um, this one here is just folded in half. Of course, I've had to cut my sheets down to fit the size of my journal. Um, I've got two of these two of these ones here as well and then of course just the plain ones whoops I've forgotten to cut these ones down I think so now my journal is the same size as the one there or thereabouts that I made last year and it is um, just 
about five and three quarters by eight and just over eight and a quarter. So I'm just going to trim these as well and then we can um, fit them inside these two pieces of string. Sorted my pages out into two signatures of six pages each. So let me just um, pop them in my strings and then I'll give you a quick flip through. So these are just going to slide under here like this. Um, I've got quite a lot of room, as you can see, just because when I was working with my Daphne's, um, not Daphne's diary, my Your Creative Studio journal, which um, I did with the same binding mechanism, um, the pages did start to get a little bit tight. Um, that's this one here. This one had three signatures and is considerably fatter, but the pages are getting harder and harder to um, remove. Um, this just makes it easier for me to take them out to work on them, swap them around if I want to as well. Um, I really like this type of, of binding and of course it's easy as well, you know, no sewing involved. I've taken the clips of my little embellishments now that the glue is dry. So let me just give you a little um, flip through. Let me just check that um, I'm in camera shot. So this is the first signature. I've got two signatures. They're both exactly the same. I've got this pocket here which I'll probably um, end up gluing on the left hand side. I just want to keep my options open for the for the time being. The colours are just beautiful um, and I just think it will be interesting to work with plain pages this time and fill the journal um, with all the gorgeous pages um, within Daphne's diary itself. Now I'll be using the pages from Daphne's diary magazines to fill my pages in this autumnal and winter themed journal and I'll be starting the first few pages sometime next week so if you are interested in following along don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications of my future videos. Well I'm leaving the video here for today, but I hope you've enjoyed seeing me put my autumn stroke winter themed journal together. And I'm really excited about filling all of these blank pages with the gorgeous images from these beautiful magazines. So if you've enjoyed today's video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. But most importantly, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.